Come on, everybody! You are on the channel for English for Biology majors, which is brought to you by Ciji University's Susan Ye. We hope after you learn this class, you will think biology is fun, and to read biology book is piece of cake. Let's go! Ye. Hello, everyone. In this part, we will start the prefixes and suffixes regarding to shapes. However, let's review what we learned last time. For describing things that are crooked or looped, we use the prefixes ancyl a n c y l and ankyl a n k y l and scolio s c o l i o. For describing things that are rod shaped, we use the prefix b a c i l l and the vector b a c t e r and the r h a b d. For describing things that are string or cord like, we use the prefixes c h o r d o cordo or f i l or m i t. Now let's continue to the last part of lesson seven. We are going to learn more prefixes and suffixes regarding to the shapes. For describing fibrous things or things look like a fiber, we use the prefixes f i b r o fibro, i n o ino. Let's see our example. For fibro, our example is fibroblast. In this picture, the fibroblast is a cell line. It's called NIH3T3 mouse embryo. It is a fibroblast. It is a very common cell line to use in in a lot of laboratories. Fibroblast is a cell found in connective tissue. That produces fiber, such as collagen, and fibroblast. It is it is not terminally differentiated, so it can differentiate into chondroblast, collagenoblast, and the osteoblast. Chondroblast can be further differentiated into cartilage, and collagenoblast can. Can be differentiated into cell that produce collagen, and osteoblast can differentiate into bone cells. For INO, our example is enochondritis. You know what is a enochondritis? The prefix. C H O N D R is granule or relating to cartilage, and I N O is fiber. Inocon and the suffix I T I S means inflammation, which will be introduced later in our course. Inochondritis is inflammation of fibro cartilage. Like in this part, this is the symphysis pubis. The the symphys the symphysis pubis. We can find the fibro cartilage in this part. When inflammation happens to this part of the fibro cartilage, it is enochondritis. We can also find fibro cartilage. In other part of our body, like、uh, the intervertebral, the intervertebral discs, and the temporal mandibular joint, can also we can also find fibro cartilage in those part of our body. Let's review what we just learned. For describing fibrous things, we use f i b r o fibro. And the ino, I N O. 
When we describe things that are shaped like a whip, we use the prefix F L A G E L L. Our example is flagellum. Flagellum in biology it is referring to a long whip-like membrane enclosed organelle used in locomotion or feeding. But when there is more than one flagellum, flagellum is the singular form. When we want to say it in plural forms. We write it as flagella, F L A G E L L A. Some bacteria have only one flagellum. However, a lot of bacteria has more than one flagellum. Then we'll say they have flagella. That is the plural form of flagellum. When we want to describe things that are berry shaped, we use the prefix. C O C C O. Let's see our example. Our example is cocoa bacteria. Cocoa bacteria is one of the round variety of bacteria. When most of the cocoa bacteria is in singular form, we use we use the name cocus, which. Which a lot of time will put at the end of、uh, of the word, but if、uh, there's、uh, always two of them stick together, we call them diplococci. Remember what we learned in the lesson in lesson three, I think, or lesson four. Diplo means double, so diplococci means、uh, two cocus. And if there are, if they form a Twisted. If they found a twisted chain, twisted long chain, we call them streptococci. The prefix s t r e p t o meaning twisted, which will be introduced in lesson eight. And when they aggregate together, look like a bunch of grapes. We call them staphylococci. The prefix s t a p h y l o will be introduced in the next part of our lesson. Staphylo s t a p h y l o means a bunch of grapes. Staphylococcus actually is a this、uh, staphyl this term staphylococcus has become a genus name. It means a spherical gram-positive parasitic bacterium of the genus Staphylococcus. They are, they can be pathogenic bacteria. They cause blisters and、uh, septicemia and other infections. The infamous MRSA belongs to a strain of Staphylococcus. MRSA stands for Methicillin-Resistant Staphylococcus aureus. When we want to describe things that are circle-shaped, we use these prefixes C Y C L, G Y R, and the O R B. Let's see our examples. For the prefix C Y C L. Our example is cycle, C Y C L E, like citrate cycle. We use the term cycle because、uh, the metabolic the metabolic pathway,、uh, no, because、uh, the last product of citrate cycle is actually the substrate of the first reaction of it. So it is. It's going around like a cycle. For the prefix G Y R, our example is giant cephala. Giant cephala. The this term is referring to a group of higher mammals, including humans and the other primates like chimpanzee, having cerebral. Hemisphere, hemispheres 
marked by convulsions, you know, have uh, those uh, gyro, what we call gyrus. So they are, so we are giant cephala. E N C E P H A L means a brain. So giant cephala is convoluted brains. For the prefix O R B, our example is orbit. Orbit is a circular or elliptical path of one object around another object. Like the Earth goes around the Sun, or the Moon goes around the Earth, then we say the Earth has an orbit around the Sun, or the Moon has an orbit around the around the Earth. Let's review what we just learned for circle. We use the prefix C Y C L and GYR and the ORB to describe things that are circle shaped or going around in circles. When we want to describe things that are disc shaped, we use these two prefixes DISCO disco or DISKO disco. However, I can't find a good example for D I S K O, so we will just see the, an example for D I S C O. Our example for D I S C O is disectomy. Disectomy, what is a disectomy? It is a surgical procedure to remove all or part of an intervertebral disc. It can also be written as D I S C O T O M Y. So, for talking about, for describing things that are disc shaped, we can use D I S C O or D I S K O. When we want to describe things that have angles, we use the prefix G O N I, Goni. Our example for Goni is Goniometer. Goniometer is a device to measure the angles of crystals. Or we can use it in, uh, we can use it for our assignment. Now uh, there's a simple form of Goniometer. Although the, although, uh, we use G-O-N-I in the prefix to describe things that have angles, it can also be moved to the end of the word, then it becomes a prefix G-O-N, like, uh, what we learned in lesson one when we talk about Pentagon. The, uh, the Department of Defense uh, of the U.S. government. We have finished all the prefixes for this part of lesson 7. Let's review what we've learned today. For describing fibrous things or things that look like a fiber, we use those uh, prefixes F-I-B-R-O, fibro, or ino, I-N-O. When we are talking about things that shaped like a whip, we use the prefixes F L A G E L L. If that thing look, uh, if that thing are very shaped, we can use the prefix C O C C O. When we describe things that look like a bunch of grapes, we use the prefix Staphylo S T A P H Y L O. When we want to describe things that are circle shaped, we use these prefixes C Y C L, G Y R, and the O R B. When we want to describe things that are disc shaped, we use these two prefixes 
D I S C O or D I S K O. When we want to describe things that have angles, we use the prefix G O N I, or it can be moved to the end of one word, then it becomes G O N. We have finished all the prefixes and suffixes for lesson seven. Next time when we come back, we will continue with lesson eight. More shapes. See ya. English for Biology major is brought to you by TCU's English for Biology major course team. If you have any questions, don't forget to visit our FB fans page. The website is here, and you can also scan the QR code to reach to our FB fans page. This course is sponsored by Centers for Faculty Development and Instructional Resources of TCU.